Hello, friends. Welcome to Art Week 23, and we are going to jump right into our lesson here. So I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to start uh, with looking at this image here on the screen. And I want you to really focus on what you're seeing and tell me, what's your impression of that image? All right. Um, yeah, I agree. It, it, when you stare at it for a while, it, it feels like it's moving. Um, I kind of get a little bit dizzy even. Uh, it's really, really interesting and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, so we're going to talk about the artist who painted that. Uh, her name is Bridget Riley. She is an English artist uh, from England and born in 1931, still alive. All right. And she was a pioneer of a style of art called op art. All right, op is short for optical, as in optical illusions, if anybody's ever heard of an optical illusion. All right, and uh, this was in the 1960s uh, when she really developed uh, her style in this op art style. And uh, she was personally really interested in um, visual disorientation, like making people uh, dizzy, feel kind of out of sorts, give that feeling that uh, the image was moving and uh, you weren't on steady ground, kind of losing your balance, right? Um, and uh, she was really interested in color as well. And um, well, as I suggested, movement. Fun fact, she was a former school teacher as well. Uh, and even though she was very interested in color, um, all of the images we're looking at here are black and white. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to go ahead and do in our project. What you're going to need is your 9 by 12 sheet of white construction paper. Okay, so that came with your supplies in the very beginning of the year. Um, you'll need your pencil, your markers, um, your sketchbook will come in handy uh, just for a straight edge because it's got this uh, hard... Um, back or the even the, the paper covers of, of the white ones it's thicker paper it'll work good for a straight edge otherwise any other sheet of paper like so would work well as a straight edge uh or if a ruler obviously if you have one and you will need your hand all right so all of the steps of this uh project are in the slides here but i'm just going to go over to the things that i need to see um your horizontal stripes in your picture need to be approximately, that's about a half inch apart. All right, so if you don't have a ruler, don't worry. Uh, the cap of a marker, very handy, is if you measure from the width, all right, is about a half an inch. So you could just use the end of your marker uh, as a way to measure. And that's what I will use in my demonstration just to show you how that works. Um, so I'll be looking to make sure that your stripes are about a half inch apart. The main thing there is I want you to have enough stripes uh, for this uh, optical illusion effect to be really cool. Um, your assignment should show evidence that you used a straight edge to make the straight lines in your picture, okay? Don't just do them by hand. I am a thousand years old, folks. I can tell when you didn't use a ruler so just or a straight edge. So just try your best. Be patient, all right? And you're going to be glad that you did. Uh, it's gonna make your project look really cool. Um, and I'll be looking for it. So, um, and the lines inside of your traced hand, as you see in my example, down there in the bottom corner are going to be curved. I'm gonna show you how to do this. And you're gonna color in every other stripe uh, to give it the kind of disorientating, um, disorienting, uh, um, effect that Bridget Riley's paintings had. So let's go ahead. I'm going to um, jump to my uh, desktop camera and let's get started. And you can work uh, right along with me if you like. Um, I recommend it. And so get your supplies together. And for now, I'm going to put my markers aside, except for one. I'll take one marker out as my measuring tool. I'm going to get my um, red marker, it'll show up real good on my camera here. And uh, I'm going to put my sketchbook aside for now. I don't need the straight edge yet. I'm going to start with some measuring. So you're going to, um, on this 
these long edges of your paper. Well, actually, we're not going to start with the measuring yet. Sorry, friends. First step, trace your hand. So place your hand right in the center of your paper. And just take your time. There's no, no rush. Art isn't a race, right? And let's trace right around your hand the best you can. We just try our best. And yeah, hands can be tricky to trace because uh, they uh, don't always lay flat to the paper. But I'm sure you have traced your hand before. So this part of this project is probably not going to be new. I think the other parts of the project may be new and they're going to be really cool. All right, so there we go. I have my hand traced. Excellent. All right, that's upside down for you. So let's um, turn it around. Here we go. Now I'm going to start measuring. So I'm going to take my marker here and I'm just going to line that up so that the bottom edge of my marker is lined right up to the bottom edge of my paper. And then I'll make a little mark right at the edge of the marker. Then I move my marker and gonna line up the edge of the marker or the edge of that cap to the mark I just made and make a new mark on the other edge of the cap. And I'm just gonna keep going up my paper here. Let me see if I can get a little closer so you can see a little better. Um, it's hard to see my measuring marks, I know. But uh, let's see if we can increase the exposure and let that show up a little better. All right, and I'm just gonna go up and down the paper. And this does take some time, my friends, but it's gonna be worth it. This is kind of the, the hard work getting there for a cool looking project when it's all done. And the main thing is I don't want you making, if you make you have your marks too far apart, you won't have enough stripes for this project to have the, that optical illusion disorienting op art effect that we saw in Bridget Riley's, Riley's painting. So it's taking our time. And while we're gonna have to do this along the other edge of the paper as well, and if you're thinking, how will Mr. Miller know that my marks are about a half inch apart because he won't actually get to measure my actual paper? Well, my friends, I know how big your paper is. So I know about how many stripes you should have across your paper <laughs> in the end if you measured them about a half an inch. So, and it's all right if you're off a stripe or two, that's the, the, the point is to not make um, too big a stripes by making this uh, a project you can just breeze right through because then it won't have the cool effect that we're looking for and that I want you to experience making. I think you're going to enjoy it. So, whoop. Going off camera a little bit here. It's because I can uh, I can move my my uh, uh, document camera up again a little bit. And almost done with my measuring here on one side. And I got to do the same thing on the other side. There we go. And your your marks don't need to be real big. You don't need to be, make big dark marks. I just make as long as they're, you know, just enough for you to be able to see them. Um, that's really what you're looking for. So, anyway, laptop out of my way a little bit here, and I'm going to measure on my other side. Yeah, 
Let's line that up the best I can. And my marks are pretty light. You might not even see them too good in the video, but I assure you they're each about one width of this marker cap. That's the measurement across the cap, not the length. All right, we're just doing the width measurement. And if you have a ruler, obviously this can go faster. You'd be measuring off every half inch. It's like skip counting. So for every inch, you would have two marks. But I do recommend if you use a ruler, um, make sure you are familiar with how to use a ruler. I have uh, used rulers in class with many students before, and it can be tricky um, if you have not done a lot of measuring, measuring things like fractions of inches. So using the marker cap, I think, kind of gets us around that confusion at least, because uh, there's really just one place to put your mark if you're just using one object to measure with, uh, well, two places, the, be the beginning of that measurement and the end of that measurement. And that's what I'm doing here with the marker cap. And I'm almost done already. And I hope you're working right along with me. It's it's a it's an interesting year in some ways. How how we don't all have like uh, rulers, right? We always we all have rulers in the art room, but we don't all have rulers right now. Um, so we're being creative. Creativity is all about problem solving, right? And uh, this using a marker cap to measure. It's a great example of using the creativity to solve the problem of not having a ruler. So here we go. I've got all my measuring marks done on my long edges of my paper. And now I'm going to get my sketchbook and really all, like I said, a regular piece of paper would work fine. But all I'm doing here is uh, I'm going to line up my straight edge with the first measurement on one edge of the paper with the first measurement on the other edge of the paper, those little marks I made every time I measured the marker cap. Line them up real good. Take your time with lining them up and then hold down your straight edge really well and just gently let your pencil skate across. But here's the important part. You gotta watch where your hand where your hand tracing is, we're not gonna draw the line through the hand. It's gonna be as if our, our line is going underneath that traced hand. So here we go, just tracing along my straight edge and I'll stop right when I get to the edge of my wrist there in the drawing, my tracing, and then pick up on the other side of the wrist tracing line. Then I'm gonna move my straight edge up to the next mark, do the same thing. Always being careful not to draw my straight line right through the hand. And that means you got to be always paying attention to what you're doing. But you'll get in the zone. You'll get the hang of it. There we go. Lining those up carefully. Uh, being able to use a straight edge is going to be very handy in art class and just in life in general. Um, you, will, you will definitely encounter times when you can't just use a computer um, 
for something you're doing. And uh, sometimes, uh, really, depending where you are, what you're doing, it's it can be faster to just go ahead and draw it. Of course, the technology skills are great to know too. It's good to have a good toolbox. I mean, it's like have a lot of skills that you can use if you need to use them. And there we go. You get the idea. Now it's going to get tricky when you get to the fingers of the hand because then you're going to have these little spaces where you do need to draw the line, like right there between my thumb and my hand and draw a little bit of the line. And there's just going to be more and more and more of that the higher up. I go on my hand because eventually there's going to be all four of those other fingers that I'm going to have to make sure I don't draw a line through, but I need to draw my straight, straight edge horizontal line in the spaces between the fingers. So I'm going to just do this up until I have to do one of those lines to show you what I'm talking about. And don't worry if you make a little mistake, my friends, right? We got, we got an eraser right on the end of our pencil. So handy. There we go. And this is just one of those parts um, where we're just trying to be as precise as we can. And like I said, this is just a good skill to practice. It's still practicing, um, exercising those muscles in your hands, those fine motor muscles. Here we go, look at this. I've got all these little spots between the fingers where I have to draw the line now. And you're just going up and around here. You can, if I put a shadow there, you can kind of see my lines better. I'm gonna hold up this paper in just a little bit to show you, because I'm noticing it does not show up here. Let me see if I if I reduce the, there we go. Yeah, you see what I'm talking about a little better now. Sorry about that, my friends. Technology, right? Here we go. Now let's do one more line and then I'm gonna flip over my paper. Um, you'll of course have to finish yours, but I am all done on the other side of my paper with this. So I've already done it, but you're getting, you see the idea. Make sure you draw your straight horizontal line and I'm not letting my straight edge move. Each time I'm keeping it connected to those two measuring marks that I made on both of those long edges of the paper. So. When you finally get to the end, and I only had a few more to go, all right, it's going to look, well, here, I'm gonna actually finish it. I'm a little further ahead on the other side than I thought, so I don't want you to see that quite yet. That's all right, I'm almost there. And, very close, just a couple more to do. And now once you get clear of the fingers, it's nice and easy. It's just one straight line all the way across, connecting those two measuring marks. I think this is my last one. And sure enough, there it was. So see, I had an extra measuring line on this side. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Uh, the main part was that I've got enough stripes in here. And now let me get a little close up to my paper here so you can see what I'm going to be doing. All right, so you're going to, now the lines, you're gonna connect the horizontal lines 
where they would where it's like they're going underneath your tracing of your hand but not with a straight line you're going to make a bump like a frog jumping over a cliff like across a canyon you're going to make a curved line connecting those two like a doesn't need to be a real real high hill just a nice curve like that that's going to give this a cool 3d effect as if there's stripes going right over uh or, or or if there's a there's even like a hand under this paper and you'll see what i mean so there we go you see how i'm doing that i'm just making these bumps and i'm making sure to connect to the next line i don't want to skip ahead there we go that's going to look super cool my friends you're going to see what i mean and not too long there might be occasionally there'll be some tricky places to connect when you're getting close to the edges of your traced contour of your hand well there's a lot of a lot of different ways to solve that one but the main thing is you're going to not want your line to be straight when it's inside of the hand area okay there we go here's one of those tricky examples so i'm just going to go whoa make it wiggly and look at that connect to that line down there and then i'll just make it like a regular hill on this side and now it's going to get easy again when i'm just inside the individual fingers all right so after this now it's time to get out the marker now it's up to you if you want to you could uh we want to have an alternating stripe pattern like the example we saw in the video um you could just do black and white I think that's the easiest and the quickest because then you're only coloring in um, every other horizontal stripe because the paper is already white. But if you would like to do this a two color stripe pattern, like um, blue and orange or something like that, um, you just make sure every other stripe is blue and then the leftover ones at the end are going to be an orange one. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do, I am going to, and I'll get my marker, I'm going to use my Sharpie. For this because it'll show up better on the camera and we're not tracing the tracing of the hand we're going to actually erase that later but first i'm going to go over my lines with my marker my horizontal lines and when it gets to the hand you're going to follow that hill you made And then, like so. And you just keep doing that just with these horizontal lines. And when we're done with all of our horizontal lines in marker, we're going to erase that hand tracing. So you won't even be able to see that you had traced a hand, and it's going to be like this optical illusion of a 3D hand. right in your uh, your project here. And this does take a bit of time, my friends, but it's gonna be worth it. I think your project's gonna look really cool. I think you're gonna be proud of it. And you might even uh, take it home and show your family and they might be like, whoa, and get all dizzy and disoriented and uh, <laughs> be like, what's going on? And have to grab onto the wall like, oh, I'm getting dizzy. Well, maybe that's not going to happen, but maybe it is. I don't know. And there we go. Just following my 
horizontal lines, just kind of ignoring the lines of my trace tan, except for I know that's where the, the hill lines start. So I made a little mistake there. I'm gonna just remember that I'm going to wanna do this stripe. I'm gonna color it in dark. And I'll just start there for my pattern because then I know I can just cover up that mistake when I color it in. Perfect solution to that little problem there. And I hope you're working right along with me, friends. Use your work time in class wisely and stay on task and you'll never have a late assignment. There we go. I'm getting close to the edge, close to the end. All this hard work is paying off. And of course, I'm, I've traced many lines before, so maybe I'm going a little quickly here, uh, but you work at the pace as comfortable for you. There'll be time to get this done. And as always, if, if you ever don't um, finish an assignment during class time, um, keep it in your art supply bag and you can work on it anytime you finish another assignment later down the road. Um, if you finish one early, you can just uh, get out one of the assignments you did not get done and finish it up because you probably came close to getting it done. And there would just be a little bit more work uh, to do. Just a couple more lines and then I am set. Now I'm going to start coloring mine in in the middle to cover up that one mistake, but I, I recommend starting on one end, right? Deciding whichever one you're coloring in black or whatever colors you're using, and then just keep skipping the next stripe and then color in the stripe after that and so on. I'm going to use a nice uh, fat marker here to make this go uh, quicker for the video, but you'll be able to see the effect here. And I can go ahead and color in my stripes first and then the very last step, um, I'm going to erase my lines. That's actually um, similar to how uh, many artists who make comic books and comics uh, work. They pencil in all the lines and go over them with ink. And when your inking is all done, then you can just erase the lines, the pencil lines. And your ink will stay there. You can't erase the ink. So there we go. It's coming along well. And I'm gonna turn it this way. It feels a little better um, in my, my hands. And uh, that's a, you know, if you ever need to turn your paper, I'm sure you already do this. Um, 
whatever way is most comfortable for your hands um, to have your paper uh, set up under you is just fine. Don't need to hurt your hands unnecessarily by trying to keep your paper still. As long as you're focused on what you're doing, uh, make yourself comfortable, right? So I think you can see how it's coming along here. And I would just keep on going and finish up all my stripes. I think I'm going to, um, I don't think I'll finish my whole one during the video. Um, and because I think at this point you get how it works, but I'm gonna do a couple of those um, lines up above towards my fingers because those are tricky, those are the trickier ones to do than when I'm just doing this one uh, like curved line when I go over the wrist and stuff down here. So let's go, let's do this one here. And as long as you stay inside of your horizontal lines of your stripe, it's all going to work out good. Just ignore, ignore the, the lines of the traced hand. And take your time, stay focused. This is uh, <laughs> because the style of artwork is literally like designed to make you, uh, to trick your eyes, right? And to uh, get you a little bit confused. It can be tricky actually making it because your eyes can start to be fooled um, by these black and white patterns. And you can get confused about which lines uh, you're supposed to be coloring in and it's actually the artwork working on your eyes while you're trying to make it uh, which is kind of funny i wonder if uh, bridget riley ever had that problem when she was painting uh, just getting mixed up about uh, what parts she was filling in because her own artwork was making her dizzy i wouldn't be surprised if it happened once in a while And there you go, I'll just do one more stripe, I think, and then I'll wrap up uh, the video. And of course, when you're all done with this, just like any project we do on paper like this, you're going to take a photo of it with your iPad and turn it in to our assignment post inside of our folder this week on Schoology. And as always, our most recent um, assignment folders are the ones at the bottom of the page in Schoology. Aside from that white folder that I make appear um, during art class, the art activities for early finishers, um, if you get this finished early and turned in early and there's still time left in class, uh, that's where you would go inside of that white folder to find um, and that an art activity to do until we are done with class. But uh, that's not where you turn in um, any of your assignments. Oh, I'll do one more because that is the last one of the stripes that goes over my fingers here. And then you'll, you'll be able to already, you can already see kind of the illusion effect. But once I do this one, I'm going to uh, show you how you erase your pencil lines. So we can't see any of that traced hand. And like I said, I recommend waiting to erase the traced hand lines until you are all done coloring in uh, your stripes, at least one color of your stripes. Because if I were to, let's say, if I wanted to color in the white stripes here with uh, yellow, then I could, before I do that, I could get rid of the uh, traced lines anyways, uh, because I can very clearly see what parts I'm gonna color in yellow. So see how this works. Once you've got your stripes done, you just go over with an eraser and you erase 
all those lines that show the tracing of your hand. And you're gonna be left with this optical illusion of as if these stripes are laying over a hand or this paper is laying really tightly over a, a hand that's under it. So. There we go. Almost have all my lines erased. I don't really need to worry about erasing the ones inside of the black stripes, just the ones in the white stripes here. All right, friends, so um, this pretty much wraps it up. I would, of course, um, finish coloring in all my stripes if this was a project I was uh, turning in, but this is just my demonstration for the video. So I, th I think you get the idea. There we go. Look at that, pretty cool. It would look even cooler if uh, when I finish all of the stripes on there. So that's all it takes, my friends. I'm gonna switch uh, back to uh, my face camera. And don't forget, when your project's all finished, take a nice, well lit, in focus, close up, but don't cut off any of your project. I wanna see the whole project. Okay, take a nice picture of it with your iPad and turn that in to our assignment post inside of our folder for this week. All right, good luck artists.